Okay, so we'll do some bluey. Okay, simple thing for bluey. I mean, it's good for a cocktail bait as well, bluey. Mixing it with squid, great for certain rays, bullhus. You always get eel on it as well. Okay, just put those there. So you can either score it down the sides and then have a large bait. Or what I tend to do is off the boat, sometimes in close as well, just cut it in half on the angle. Get your hook in through the bottom of the jaw. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. So it comes out the top of the head. Pull it through. It should come out between the eyes roughly. And then I run it just down its back and put it in about halfway down, go down deep into the fish and then back up and out. What I tend to do is just make a little nick at the top of the fish. That allows the hook to bed down in there when you pull it tight through like so. So as you can see the hook's sitting proud there. Then what I tend to do is just to keep that hook shank down, especially if you're casting because it takes all sorts of pressures. Whip a bit of the old elastic around it. Plus it keeps them pesky crabs off a little bit. So it keeps the hook looking good, keeps it nice and free. And then what I tend to do is I just whip up towards the eyes again, just hold the beak. Whip up towards the eyes and then that. There you have a nice simple and effective bluey bait that'll pick up many fish and it sits on the bottom quite nice when it moves around it's not jerky or anything else, comes out the bottom of the mouth there. Uh, gives a good presentation whilst uh, letting out lots of oil. So bluey is exceptionally oily, more so than mackerel. Okay, other ways to do bluey. Because it's quite a delicate fish, it's uh, it goes soft very quickly. I just tend to whip the tail off regardless. I don't use that area unless it's the whole bottom half. And then with this, just simply cut a section here, come down to the spine, turn the knife, and just go along the spine. Cut a small fillet off. These, some people prefer to fold them and leave all the flesh on the outside. Some people prefer to leave natural colouring on the outside. I'm one of those that prefer to leave the colouring on the outside. One, because it's natural. Two, there's plenty of scent going out anyway. And uh, yeah, it's just my preferred choice. But each of them. So on a boat, you can simply just hook it through like so and just lower it down. That will perfectly uh, sit there quite happily in the tide. I'd normally stick a bit of bait elastic around the top just to hold it to the hook. Or in this case, I'll just pull that all the way through and back in and out. Pull it tight. And then what I do is I will whip that. Just bend the fish a bit. Oops. Crush the flesh, okay, and then just whip it up. This lets out lots of juice, lots of oil. Okay, plenty around the bottom there. Okay, so that's how I tend to do it from casting. I'll have it like so, and then bring down the panel hook, because I've given it a good few turns of elastic at the top already. Just loop that around the wire a couple of times. 
and in and out. That simple. Pull it tight. One good bluey bake to go. So, one whole fillet of bluey. And uh, say, if you're on the boat, simply just hook it through the top. I tend to do it through the thin end. Then just whip it to it, and then pull it through and have it halfway down. That'll catch any good uh, pus, blonde, eel, anything like that. Pull two if you're lucky. Okay, so the other way I do it is, lastly, down through and out. I'll whip it all up. Few turns at the top here like this just helps with that panel hook, especially when you're casting from the shore. Presentation is not always essential from a boat, but from the shore, I think it is. If it doesn't look right, they will avoid it. Okay, so a nice simple fillet of bluey there. So next up, herring. I think it's a highly underrated bait, especially here in the Bristol Channel. I mean, it's absolutely loaded in our oceans and it's a natural bait. So uh, yeah, let's get onto a herring bait. So I'm just open that up. So these are prime baits, absolutely. Fresh as a daisy, fantastic. Okay. Look at the colour of them still. Anyway, so first one, let's get rid of the tail, don't need that. So fill it straight in behind the pectoral fin, down to the spine, turn your knife. I'm thinking. Run along the spine and you get yourself a nice fillet. Okay. If you're going after Congress ain't cutting it in half like that, I tend to have one big bait out and one small bait. You can either add a bit of squid into the missing hole or in through the bottom. Like so. Out the top. In through the gill plate, thread it through, put it tight. If over the boat, just lower it down like so. Gives a good clearer hooking point. If not, add some. Uh, I just leave it loose. Just remember when uh, something does take it, it's best to wait for a few rattles first. Let it take it properly because you've got the hook halfway up but it does keep the dogs off so just whip it around the hook a few turns at the bottom here oh okay let's get that over there that's it okay there we go then you can either leave this so it'll be flapping in the water or you can give it a few turns of the elastic and keep it a bit straighter as personal preference. I tend to leave it to flap, especially if going after conga. Again, movement for a predator. Predators and scavengers they are. And it sits there, perfectly on the bottom. But also lets out lots of uh, juice and everything. So, move that. Okay, if casting from the shore, got our fillet. You can either fillet it up like I did 
with the bluey and uh, just put it, one in the bottom, one on the top, panel it, crush it up together a little bit or as I like to do because these fish are a bit wider I like to cut it down the middle there give yourself two oh. bit of spine there, that's all okay so and you've got two baits there I tend to use the belly colour first nice and uh, reflective especially during the day or something you can either just loosely hook it through the top if on the boat I was going through the flesh side first normally I'd use a bigger hook obviously but uh, you can leave it as is and just lower it over the side or from the shore, I'll take it all the way through. Let's undo the panel hook. Don't need that. Okay. Take it through, run it into the fish again, and then back out. This is great for rays or turbot. Anything with a small mouth or thin mouth, very good for them because it's such a thin bait, but still plenty of stink because it stays out there for so long. So, edge of the bait elastic's gone. Ah. Okay, so and then just give it a few turns of the old elastic, secure it to the hook, make sure it stays on that. Again, herring's a very oily fish. Plenty of smell, and as I say, it's a natural bait, especially around here, sort of mine headway. There's a herring breeding grounds and all sorts, and fish obviously come and feed on them when they're in their numbers. Conga normally follow them in, cod as well. I hear lots of people saying you can't catch cod on the dead fish baits, not so. Okay. There we go. One long herring bait. So, if you're using a single hook, it's a good mackerel bait right there. Good for all manner of fish. And with it being slim as well, really good for rays. So, what I tend to do though, is from the shore again, I definitely use a panel. Just keeps a better presentation. Plus it doubles your chances of hooking up. So in through the top. Put it out like so. And a cracking little uh, acrobate there with two clear hooking points. Lots of people will uh, cut a macro up the middle, use a flapper, but I find this is just as effective. Where we cut the fillet out obviously, just move that so we don't need it. You've got everything still flapping here, you've got all the guts hanging out, which is what you want. Plenty of smell and everything else. So what I tend to do is get a decent sized hook obviously for conga. I think that's a 70 this one. So I go in through the bottom of the jaw first thing. Okay. In like so. Come out the top of the nose. Bring it all the way through. Like so, okay, then he's on your line. Now I'll bring it in by the gill plate, just on the edge of it. Nick it through. It can be a bit tough on some of the bigger mackerel. But that's also why it's so good. So hold your hook nicely in place. There we go. Bring it down like so. Pull your line back out. And here you have. I just tend to get some bait elastic now. See if you can grip him. Okay, give it a few turns. Okay, get a good grip of it. And just go down to your hook. 
and around. I'll just go just underneath just to hold that again. Good place. I'll leave the rest of flap away. Again, this is also really good for bass. Especially off a boat. So take that off on mackerel flapper bay. But without having to use a whole mackerel. So plenty of oil, plenty of stink. Good bait.